Hello students in this video let's revise the chapter magnetic effects of current through a few case study questions so take a notebook and note down the questions so that you can revise along with me question number 1 according to michael faraday when magnet is in motion relative to a coil attached with a galvanometer induced electric current is set up in the coil in another experiment there were two separate coils a battery was connected to one and the galvanometer to other Only when battery was switched on or off the galvanometer shows deflection. This idea of creation of current by changing magnetic field strength is called electromagnetic induction. The various experiments performed by him lay the foundation necessary to make the electric motor, generators and transformers. In the first part of the case it's been explained that when a bar magnet is introduced into a coil the galvanometer shows deflection due to the induced current produced in the coil. In the second case you can understand that there are two coils in one of the coil a galvanometer is connected that is to the second coil and to the first coil a battery is connected and whenever the switch is put on or off you can see a momentary deflection in the galvanometer now let's go through the questions based on this case the first question is name the rule that is used to find the direction of induced current in a closed circuit placed in changing magnetic field There are three rules that we study in this chapter and one rule which helps you to identify the direction of induced current is Fleming's right hand rule. So the answer is Fleming's right hand rule. Fleming's right hand rule states that if we held our thumb, forefinger and middle finger of the right hand mutually perpendicular to each other, then the thumb point towards the direction of magnetic force, forefinger point towards the direction of magnetic field and the middle finger gives you the direction of the induced current. Next question how is the induced current in a secondary coil related to current in a primary coil you can see that a momentary deflection is seen in the galvanometer connected to the second coil when the switch of the first coil is put on or off this means whenever the switch is put on the current flows through the first coil creating a magnetic field the presence of this magnetic field induces a current in the second coil similarly when the switch is put off there is a change again in the magnetic field this change again induces a current in the second coil so the answer for this question is when current in the primary coil changes a current is induced in the secondary coil third question explain the meaning of the word electromagnetic and induction in terms of electromagnetic induction The word electromagnetic means that an electric potential is being produced in the coil due to change in the magnetic field and the word induction means that the current has been induced. Question D. A coil of insulated copper wire is connected to a galvanometer. What would happen if a bar magnet is held stationary in the coil? We have understood that induced current is produced when the magnet moves inside and outside of the coil. If the magnet is kept stationary then there is no induced current produced in the coil so there will be no change in the galvanometer so that's the end of the first case study let's move on to the second case study a compass needle gets deflected from its north south orientation when placed near a current carrying conductor the magnetic field produced around the conductor exerts a mechanical force on the needle and sets it in motion According to Ampere the magnet should also exert some force on the conductor which is equal and opposite the famous kicking wire experiment was performed which verified Ampere's assertion that when a current carrying conductor is kept in an external magnetic field a force acts on it in the case study there are two conditions explained in the first case it is the movement of compass needle or the deflection of compass needle when it is kept near a current carrying conductor and in the second case or second part of the case study you can understand that when a current carrying conductor is placed between the poles of a magnet or in a magnetic field due to a force acting on the conductor the conductor itself gets deflected now let's try to answer a few questions based on this case study question a the direction of force acting on current carrying conductor in external magnetic field is given by which rule As said earlier we have three rules to study in this chapter and the rule which gives you the direction of force is Fleming's left hand rule Fleming's right hand rule will give you the direction of induced current and Fleming's left hand rule will give you the direction of the force acting on the conductor Question B name the factors on which force acting on the conductor depends If you need to increase or decrease the force acting on the conductor then you should have some change in the current 
or some change in the magnetic field so these are the factors that affect the force acting on the conductor strength of magnetic field strength of the electric field or the strength of the electric current and length of the conductor the force increases if the current length of the wire or the magnetic field strength increases question c list two methods of producing magnetic fields there are three ways to produce magnetic field you can use a bar magnet or any horseshoe magnet or any round magnet to produce a magnetic field a current carrying conductor can produce a magnetic field around it a circular loop or a solenoid can also produce magnetic field if current flows through it name some devices in which electric motors are used we know that electric motor is a device that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy so look around you and find out some devices that convert electrical energy to mechanical energy yes so you can have devices like washing machine mixer grinder electric fan electric pump etc which have electric motors in it so that's the end of the second case study let's move on to the third case study Hans Christian Oyster was a Danish scientist noticed that a compass needle placed in close proximity deflected its initially aligned north south direction in the presence of a current carrying wire that experiment has been the first one to indicate that current carrying wire produces a magnetic field he showed that electricity and magnetism were related phenomena This experiment is one of the most important in the utilization of electric power as it has led to the discovery of electromagnetism and the development of electric motor. His research later created technologies like radio, television and fiber optics. The unit of magnetic field strength is named as oystert in his honor. So this case study also emphasizes that electricity has magnetic effect. First question, direction of electric current passing through a vertical wire and through a horizontal cardboard is shown beside. Sketch the pattern of the magnetic field on the cardboard around the wire. Indicate the direction of magnetic field at any one point. The direction of magnetic field in a straight current carrying conductor is given by the right hand thumb rule. So apply the right hand thumb rule here. The current is going in the downward direction. Now keep your right hand in such a way that the thumb points in the downward direction. Look the direction in which the fingers close, the other four fingers close. You can see that the other four fingers close in a clockwise direction. That means the magnetic field around this vertical wire carrying conductor is in clockwise direction. Whenever you draw current or you draw magnetic field lines, always remember to put the arrow marks to show the direction. Question B on what factors the strength and direction of the magnetic field around a current carrying conductor depend on we have learnt that the two factors on which the magnetic field around a current carrying conductor depend on is the current and the distance from the wire when current increases the magnetic field also increases and when the distance from the wire increases the magnetic field or the field strength decreases Question C Suppose a horseshoe magnet is held vertically upwards with the north pole on left a wire is passing between the poles carries a direct current away from you in which direction the magnetic force is exerted on the wire so let's first imagine the situation there is a horseshoe magnet and the north pole is on the left side a current carrying wire is kept between the poles and the current is moving away from you So how will you find the direction of magnetic force we have already discussed that the direction of magnetic force is given by the fleming's left hand rule so take your left hand and release the thumb four finger and middle finger in such a way that the four finger shows the field and it should be pointed from left to right the current is given by the middle finger and it should be pointed away from you now note on the direction of the thumb you can see that the thumb is pointed towards the downward direction and thumb gives you the direction of force so the direction of force that means the conductor will move in the downward direction so according to the fleming's left hand rule the magnetic field direction is from left to right current is going away from you hence the direction of the force will be in the downward direction identify the poles of the magnet in the given figure 1 and 2 Let's recall the property of magnetic field lines. We know that magnetic field lines start from north pole and end in south pole outside a bar magnet. So observe figure 1. You can see that the field lines start from the left pole that is the left side pole and move towards the right side pole. And in figure 2 the field lines start from the first magnet and moves towards the second magnet. So here are the 
poles of the magnet you can observe that in the figure 1 the north pole is on the left side and south pole is on the right side and similarly in figure 2 the first magnet it's the north pole given and the second magnet south pole is given so i hope that you could follow the three case studies that we have discussed in this video link of the playlist of uh, physics and chemistry chapters term 2 of class 10 in the description also check the other videos of revision series it is part 1 2 and 3 for more questions let me wish you all the best for the upcoming term 2 science board exam and let you all perform well if you like this video hit the like button and share the video among your friends also subscribe the channel for more contents of class 10